Got it. All right, all right. Bobo here with Brass Real Brothers. Thank you come out. Thanks for coming back for another episode of Brass Real tonight. I got my boy Rylan Johnson joining me here again. Rylan, what's up, man? Bobby, what's up, buddy? We're back. We're back. I'm excited, man. It's uh, yeah. I was ready for some popcorn. Let's go. Yeah, yeah it's some popcorn. <laughs> got Evil T one thousand and the Terminator. You're the Terminator. I'm Evil T one thousand. Ooh, I'll take that. I'll take the T eight hundred. T T eight hundred all day, baby. You know. Yeah, 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 yeah. Come on. So uh, Ooh, that's, a, that's a good Arnold, man. I, my mine's terrible. Yeah, no, that's good. That's all you gotta yeah. do. You just gotta open up the jaws yeah. a little bit and yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah don't be crazy. Yeah. And you gotta you gotta say here or there. Anything with the er or like here. Mm -hmm. You have to say two syllables. He's like over here, here, over here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, how was your fourth of July, man? Of yeah, happy fourth, dude. Um, Yesterday was fun. I, I I usually work weekends. I got the day off, so it was a, it was a fun time. My friends have the pool, so it's 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 the best when you have a friend with a pool. You know, you don't have to take care of it or any of that thing. You just show up with a with a floaty and a in a pool towel, and you're ready to roll. <laughs> yeah, dude, that's the greatest. That's kind of what I did at my mom's yesterday as well. I a lot of times I'll try to help out with things, but there was like 25 people mm -hmm. there, and so I was just like, you know what? Nice. I'm gonna act like I'm a guest. There's so many people. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's the first fourth too since COVID. People were were out and about having a good time. Everybody was popping fireworks all day. It was it was a good time, man. We had we had a good dinner and and good company. And I feel like life's kind of back to normal, which which is exciting. It did feel it did feel a little back to normal, definitely. Uh, even when I was yeah. going out to the store the day before, had to go to the store for one or two things yesterday. You could see everybody on the road, everybody in their American garb, just whatever it be yeah. that they yeah. were wearing or not wearing. <laughs> uh, yeah. We we definitely had a good time. That was me. I was at. Go ahead. No, Go I was ahead. at the grocery Sorry. store early. I was at the grocery store early, and, and I'm the guy who never buys alcohol on a Sunday, I guess. So I was sitting there at 10:30 a.m. trying to buy beer. And I wasn't the only one, you know, the, 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 the little girl at the stand was like, I'm sorry, sir. I can't sell you this beer till noon. She had a big stack of alcohol that people were trying to buy. Cause you know, the fourth doesn't happen on Sunday, apparently every few years. So, you know, yeah. um, it was funny. I was like, Oh yeah, I'm so sorry. <laughs> yeah, I'm man. That's, what's funny is, is I've done that many a times, not on the fourth, <laughs> just, <laughs> just because. Right. I'm very rarely up before noon on a Sunday wanting alcohol. I'll tell you that, but you know, it was, it was a funny thing to go through because I wasn't the only one, you know? Well, yeah. And, and, and look, let's face it. Fourth of July is an American holiday and most American holidays entail drinking. I mean, that's just the way it is. Yeah, that's true. That is true. And the weather was honestly Definitely. perfect yesterday. Oh, or God, you know, I mean, Saturday have... was good too, but it was perfect yesterday. Man. If you've lived in Texas your whole life, like me, I don't. I can't remember a Fourth of July that perfect and cool and not humid and not hot. And I mean, I you know, my my dad he was the one slaving over the 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 grill every year, so I'm sure he was having a ball at his house. I didn't see him yesterday, but I'm sure he was enjoying that cool weather. Yeah, man. Because instead of it being 120 degrees with the grill, it was only 100 with the grill. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. That heat index will get you, man. You know. Yeah, and it, you know, you, you were talking about the fireworks. People didn't do fireworks a whole lot around here until like four in the afternoon. And then they did it to like 11 at night last night. And they were like loud ones and it was scaring my dog. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, I've got three dogs and only one has a hard time with it. So I tried to get back home in a decent hour because they, around my neighborhood, they were, it was 1 a.m. and they were still popping off. So, well, luckily you know, they was, stopped uh, it, it was, around 11. It's a normal fourth. Okay. Now that's respectful. You know, anything it, after midnight, come on guys, let's wrap it up, you know? Well, and it, and it is, you know, it was, it was Monday today too, even though it's, it's not work yeah. to someone I had work to do. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. A lot of us have to still go, go on on Monday, but yeah, apparently a lot of people were off today, which is nice. I think the banks are closed everything. Yeah. They're treating it like um, a full on right. holiday. Nice. Yeah. Good and and I, I'm just making sure that I haven't spent too much yesterday because even though I've paid my rent, it hasn't come out yet. And it's like, all right, yeah. you got to make no, sure I'm not. I, I hate it when a, you do something, it doesn't come out, you know? Especially on a, yeah, on a, on a holiday weekend, you're just looking at that bank account going, what? what? When's it going to happen? <laughs> yeah. So 
man, let's get to some movie talk uh, real quick. I yeah. want to cover up a, a few things, I think. Uh, and, you know, guys, anybody. Oh, sorry. that Anybody watching, I'm still sort of in the pre phases of this show. So, you know, to the six fans that we have, I am wanting to do it live. But <laughs> at this point, we're just trying to, like, get it still figured out. So this is a live projection that you're seeing, but it's just not, you're not watching it live, but everything we haven't edited anything no. like that. So if there are questions that anybody has anything like that, I do have some stuff that I would like to, um, let me see here. I'm trying to get to some other deals. If there we go. If you got questions, uh -huh. send it to that. Send it to brass real Bobby cool. at gmail.com. And ultimately, you can put stuff in the chats, too. Ultimately, we'd like to be doing some direct answering to people that are putting in the chats. But, you know, one day, we just aren't there quite yet. Like Rylan said a second ago, baby steps. So anyways, BrassWorldBobby.com, yeah, BrassWorldBobby at gmail.com. If you got any questions you want us to talk about, topics about some movie stuff, we'd love to get something like that to give us more to, to bounce off of. So anyways, there's oh, yeah. that. So I just think it's kind of funny, man, that... Uh, F9, since we talked about it last time and we're both kind of like <laughs> secret closet lovers of Fast and Furious, can you believe? Yeah, that, we are. <laughs> yeah, look at that, man. Can you believe that that actually I has mean, done well over The Purge, over Boss Baby 2 and Zola this weekend? It's still beat them out. Like it's, it's just stacking up money, even with all the mediocre reviews. Man, I am not surprised at all. I would have called it. I mean, I think it just surpassed 500 million. And that's about the, I didn't think it was going to do as well as six, seven, eight, but I knew I, I would have, I would have bet a nice little nickel that it was going to make over 500, half a billion dollars just because of how much steam this thing has, man. It's, it's fun. Like I said, it's kind of, this is life is getting back to normal. The theaters are reopening and you need these movies. You need these fast and furious you need these big franchises to push the crowds to the theater and i'm as much crap as they get and how much un, like unrealistic action it is and all the bad things you can say about these movies there's still just a lot of fun and there's plenty of people in the world that don't take movies seriously you know that just want to go have fun you and me and man watch a, yeah just watch a bunch of action and and um just have some fun with it and, and that shows and, and, the, and the money and the in the ticket sales which is to me i was surprised at at people going to the theater but i wasn't surprised at the over outcome of the money that that was involved so you know yeah i mean i'm not surprised at it either i'm just surprised that it's it's doing so well in its second weekend um yeah on top of movies like the purge which is sort of like the horror slash fourth of july film that's you know that's sort of kind of become the thing uh i don't really yeah. i like the first purge i don't care for the rest of them i didn't even see this yeah. one but i'm just i'm impressed that uh it's sort of i don't know the way i'm thinking about it is f f9 of the fast franchise now it's like even as crazy and wacky as they've become, I feel like that maybe this time around people were just, you know what, that's what it is. And I'm cool with it. I'm going to see it some more because in the last couple ones, you've sort of had like this huge, like, I hate the fast and furious movies people. And then the other ones are like, no, they're fun. I think it's kind of coming around to yeah. everybody being like, all right, they're fun. You know? So yeah. Yeah. I didn't, I mean, I'm just so happy that people are, are supporting the theaters again. I mean, man, come about this time last year or maybe in the fall, once it had really gone about six, seven months of this pandemic stuff and the theaters were just dying, you know, I mean, they're already struggling kind of industry, you know, that's why they charge you $12 for popcorn. They're just trying to stay afloat, you know, and I was just happy to see this, this type of push towards theaters again. I'm just such a theater guy. I just Me love too. I love being in a movie theater. It's it's just like where I go and decompress and relax and 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 it's my thing. So I'm just happy that um you know and, and I'm willing to pay. I can tell that the ticket prices have gone up. I've been to two movies in the last month, and you know it's it's of course it's this nice theater over here, but they were about twenty dollars a piece. So you know forty bucks to go take your girl to a movie, I'll pay it. You know I'll I'll, I'll to me that's that's more than fair right now for what for what's going on. Well, there's a there's a a it's hard to describe the word I'm looking for, but there's a, a feeling that comes along with going to see a, a movie, you know, in the theater. It's the smell. It's the other people. It's even the occasional annoyances 
from some people talking in here and there because the movie to me i've always enjoyed the crowd participation especially in horror and comedies like to me comedies are always better in the theater they just are because you have people laughing with you and somebody laughing at something makes you laugh it's like look how funny this guy thinks this is and you just have a good time with it and then horror is the same way you know that that joke of the kill like oh yeah oh yeah uh but i i definitely i think that there's something that comes along with that just as soon as i walk into the theater it's something you yeah. it's worth that paying for because it's something you can't get anywhere else you can put a movie on all day long at your house the biggest screen ever even put the movie popcorn on try to get the smell but you don't have the musky floors yeah. you know you don't have the whole thing you know you know the biggest thing for me especially recent with these iphone or these smartphones and you know your phone's just constantly going off social media especially with us we're in you know we're in groups and and we do content on youtube and all this stuff so it's constantly needing our attention our phone this 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 and when you go to a theater you have to respect other human beings and put that away put it in Mm -hmm. your pocket and i don't know about you but there's very few times in my life that my phone is either off or in my pocket and i know i'm not going to look at it for two hours you know i don't that's i mean to be taken out yeah, of the film by some sort of distraction, you know? Yeah, exactly. And that's what's that's what I like is that, okay, for two hours here, I'm going to decompress. I'm going to, you know, get into this movie. And like, and, and being in a theater is just, to me, is, is so therapeutic at times, you know? And summer was always the best as a kid because, thank God for Jaws and these summer blockbuster movies that came out at a certain time that where summer was where it was at. All the kids were out of school. If you want your big blockbuster movie, put it in summer because it's going to do the best. So to yeah. me, that's the most exciting time of the year, you know. And t- for me, if I, I mean, I, honestly, you always had movies when we were kids, like especially in the, the, the late 80s, early 90s. You always had movies that would come out at Christmas and Thanksgiving. You would have those. But for the most part, my memories as a kid watching entertainment was watching TV throughout the fall and yeah. the spring. And when summer came, it was movie time. And we would rent yeah. movies because they would come to video and stuff like that. But as far as like the new bambastic, it was that, you know what I mean? Now they are utilizing every month to try to still January. I feel like is the month where we still get no good movies, but even February now we're getting like Oscar award winning films. So. Yeah. The poor January, the poor horror genre, they get the January, February dump, you know, there's always some conjuring movie or, something in those 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 slow months that you know that fans are like, okay. one that's like all right it's pretty good but for the most part the good horror movies come out at the end of the summer or halloween yeah yeah, yeah. well but yeah i mean i'm just excited to see people getting back in the theaters and 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 franchises and movies making money again it's so freaking important to hollywood is if you you know i mean i don't, I don't know how much it costs to make fast nine but it's I'm sure it was a couple hundred million. So oh, it was 200 plus they need re- for sure. I know yeah, that. They need to recoup their, their money. They need to make some money. They need to keep this, this, this industry going. So very exciting. Yeah. If everybody could get an education, like all the people that love movies that, but that want to like torrent films all the time, because I'm an anti torrenter mm-hmm. I don't yes. believe in torrenting music or like if I download anything or stream anything, it's just that it's from a streaming service, yep. whether it be music or music. Uh, yeah. Piracy music. sucks, man. You know, piracy, you know, when I was a younger college kid, of course, you know, back in the, the heyday when, when the internet hit, we were all doing it. We were yeah, all yeah, everybody's done it. But you got to smarten and, up and realize that, that you literally, like, these movies, that those big, you want to see what happens when they spend $20 million on a, a sci-fi epic or anything? It looks like something that comes on the sci-fi channel, you know? Yep. You need millions and millions of dollars to make Dune. You know, so, yep. like, we got to support those. If you guys, have the so. money, you know, if you have the money, support whatever you, if you support, support the artist, support art, support anything you can. Um, and don't, don't try to be the, the, the cheapster that's trying to get it on the free. Because one, I, I, I grew up, you know, we grew up in the whole, uh, you know, uh, these movies that they put on, uh, on, on bootlegs and stuff. They were such bad. I'm such a quality guy. Me if too. the sound was bad, which was always the case. If you got a bootleg, the sound was shitty. It was a guy in a theater with a camera. It was terrible. I just couldn't watch them. So it made me mad. And I was like, I'm, I'm you know, I'm not only is that not fair to the industry, but also it's just crap quality. So I want to pay for quality. So bring it to me. <laughs> Definitely, man. Definitely bring me quality. And also on to the coattails of that, people need to not be, people have gotten desensitized and spoiled on what they're watching and forgetting 
what it takes to make what they're watching. Like it takes yeah. so much effort. People just don't appreciate oh, sure. that. Not enough people do at least because they yeah. pirate. It, it's like, if you knew yeah. what these people are pouring into it, it's like, look, Hugh Jackman doesn't get that way just by, you know, doing this and that and flipping a butt. No, he works his entire, like, to get looking like Wolverine, man, that's a, that's a like, all day grind for months oh, and yeah. months and months and months. And anyway, so just appreciate what goes into a film and remember that that $20 is worth it because of what oh, went yeah. into it, you know? Oh, yeah. Two, three hours of entertainment. I mean, come on, man. You, you go to a bar, that's like, like three drinks, you know, like you go out and you go out to eat that's like a meal you know and, let, like, and let's face it yeah. when's the last time many any of us have gone to the bar and had only a 20 dollar bar tab <laughs> <laughs> exactly not happening and um, if you're so good yeah, if you're in the good. service industry you're going to tip at least 10 regardless oh yeah oh yeah me that's what kills me going out you know i love tipping tipping my boys and my 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 crew my industry people but it does get expensive you know people are like you want to go out for the third time this week? I'm like, hmm, my, I do, but my pocket, you know, my wallet doesn't. So, yeah, but yeah, I want the lights on, so I'm not gonna go out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So look, moving on. Um, speaking of just theater stuff, getting back into theaters, and I got a couple of those yeah. to talk about. But have you got your tickets yet to this bad boy? Oh, I missed it. Hang on a second. Oh, little uh. Now, now I'm all action. over the place. Now I'm all <laughs> over the place. Here we go. I'm, I'm gonna do this one more time. I saw Natasha Romanoff. Is that is that who? There we're we for? go. That girl right there is who I'm talking about. Yes. So you got your tickets to that yet? You know, I'm I'm off Friday night, and I think that's going to be my Friday night viewing. To be honest, I haven't got the tickets yet, but um, but yeah, you know, I'm I'm always in for Marvel movies. Um, the only thing I'm wish the only thing I wished with this. Uh, with this standalone was this would have happened about eight years ago seven you know when we all wanted it when her character was still i hate to say alive you know like this was a little too late for me um but i'm such a huge fan of anything marvel so i gotta check it out you know yeah I, i'm with you on the the too late thing i mean it's 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 not too late for me at all as far as like i still want it but i think it, it yeah. would have been implemented better if it would have been a little while back it would have had more People would have been more excited about it. However, I do think people are excited about it. And let's face it, all the girls in the Marvel world are excited about it. And there's a oh, lot yeah. of them now that's changed. Oh, I mean, yeah. it's, it's not just nerd boys anymore. It's hot chicks. Yep. It's cool dudes. It's, you know, everybody oh, yeah. loves Marvel now. Yeah. And, and definitely I love the female leads getting their, 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 you know, their standalones, which is well-deserved. I mean, Black Widow's been in it since, you know, Iron Man 2. That's why I was like, what took them so long to do this? Because as fans, me, I, I've been wanting this standalone for a long time. And it's just like at the timing of it, would it like right between maybe Winter Soldier in that area, you know, when they were doing when they were doing more of the, the, the Iron Man versus Cap kind of stuff would have been sure, great. A little the, bit more the, of the political know, stuff. You know, Winter Soldier kind of bounced her off maybe the Winter Soldier storyline because they're kind of similar in a way. Um, but uh yeah, it's gonna be cool. She's she's Scarlett Johansson plays that role perfectly. Oh um, yeah, I'm really I couldn't see her as to... anybody else playing that that role. Right, and it and you know, like I said, anything Marvel that comes out in the summer, I'm gonna go check it out. It's 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 just it's it's a it's a must do for me. Yeah, I'm definitely excited about it, and I do believe. And we talked about this a little bit last time. I do believe that it is gonna be more than just more info about black widow i think there's going to be more stuff yeah. that it's going to open up for the universe things you're going to find out and it's like oh, okay all right and uh florence yeah. Pugh is already getting uh oscar buzz for her role in it yeah i heard that 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 her care you know obviously i've read a little bit into it and yeah the, the, i think the relationship between her character and 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 um black widows is going to be kind of the main focal point of the film and I, I didn't want to read into it too much, but you know, I think that's going to be a good little baddie, uh, good good villain. So that's that would that's what makes these Marvel films. Good yeah, the things. Taskmaster. Who's the is villain? Who's a, the bad guy? He's a big villain in the yeah, comics, man. Yeah, yeah. And you, do yeah, you I'm know excited, his man. thing? Uh, no, no. So his 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 power or like his whole deal is is that he can he can pretty much. If he's seen you fight and watched you fight and fought with you, he now knows your style. He mimics your style. 
So that's why you're seeing oh, cool. him with this weird shield that he's got. That's why you're seeing him pulling out bows and arrows because he's mimicking all their styles. And so Ooh. he knows how to fight just like she can fight. Because let's face it, Natasha, out of everybody's a good fighter, but what makes them win is either their tech or their powers. But Natasha is the yeah. best actual like MMA fighter of them all, you know? Yeah. Oh, for sure. Yeah. So I'm just curious to see what they're is... going to do with that Taskmaster character because his he's sort of like a chameleon of power slash fighting styles. That's cool. I love that premise of a mimic. You know, that's kind of a cool. That's a cool thing. I like that that idea. I and, and I'm I'm just glad they're bringing in old school villains and brushing. You know, just like James Gunn's doing with Suicide Squad. Not to jump just straight mm -hmm. to DC, but you know, bringing brushing off all these old villains that me as a comic fan, I always loved reading about, but I would never talking about. It was cool to talk about Batman and it was cool to talk about Superman with your friends that didn't like comics because there was movies. But if you start talking about yeah. Plastic Man or you start talking about King Shark or things like that, people yeah. are like, who the, you know, that's not, that's not, that's not cool. Now people like seeing that stuff because they've shown the sort of like lightheartedness of where it comes from, you know, like with the Modoc yeah. series on Hulu now. I mean, that's, oh yeah, they're totally taking a, a robot chicken approach with that. And it's fun because He's kind of yep. regarded like that in the comics and even by the other villains. It's like this wannabe villain over here. So yeah, I'm excited but, just to see yeah, him like, bring Taskmaster back, you know, an under underknown villain that could be something big. Yeah, for sure. Well, speaking of uh, still some other stuff that got released recently and something that I just watched in the theater, or excuse me, yesterday, but it was also released. Uh, actually, this one was a prime exclusive, was The Tomorrow War. Did you see this? Yeah. I have only seen the trailer, um, which I feel like gives away a good amount of what this movie's about and what it is. And it looks really well done. I mean, the production value is really high. I think I think it set records for for a, 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 an Amazon streaming um, product, if I'm mistaken. No, you're right. And I watched it yesterday. And it's definitely, uh, there's, the trailer definitely, kind of showed you what they're doing but they do a good job of not letting you see the like the creatures yeah. too much in the trailer because that's sort of a big part of the movie and you get a lot of it but you know there's some things here and there that it was like all right i feel like some of this was maybe a first time this like i don't know if you know the director of this and for some reason i'm drawing a blank on his name but he did like a ton of robot chicken episodes and he directed the lego oh, cool. batman movie oh wow I'm a huge fan of both of those. I've been a Robot Chicken fan since day one. Of course. And the Lego movies, I didn't get into just being a guy with no kids, but then my my close friend, Steven, who has two two children, like six and four, you know, he was like, dude, I, you've got to watch Lego, Lego Batman. These movies are so well done. And I checked them out and they were great. You know, it's I'm not much into the kid movies. Um, you know, some Pixar stuff I'll check out when it comes out, but I loved him and, and robot chickens right up my alley too. So that's cool that he's directing this. And it, like I said, it looks amazing. It looks really high production value and, and really cool sci-fi kind of story. Um, I'm a big Chris Pratt fan as well. You know, I, I love most of the things he does. So yeah, he's really likable in it. There's a cool uh, emotional dynamic to the story that I didn't expect to be in so prevalent throughout the film, as far as um, it's not just, you know, monster stuff here. There's like some relationship stuff and it's some stuff that'll, you know, make you, yeah. Get a little tear jerked here and there, maybe. Uh, I do feel like that it was a little, it was a, the production value was very good in it, for sure. Like the effects all looked great. Yeah. It, uh, the, the creatures were scary, man. I mean, when I saw them, right. I was like, man, they're making these pretty scary, like scary than I've seen recently. But I, I would say there's some, since it is sort of a tomorrow war, there's a time thing going on. It's one of those, I feel like they could have, doctored up the rules a little better when it comes to like the time traveling and what right. is possible and what's not possible what would affect something what wouldn't affect something i think they got a little too loose with that it's like oh let's right. just do this so we can have this cool action scene or whatever but i mean it was definitely cool to watch uh visually it was great chris pratt's, pratt's really good in it you like him he doesn't just play like another cool like he actually plays a character in this he plays a father so it's right. not just like you're, you're watching Star-Lord in another movie or something. You know what I mean? Well, well, J.K. Simmons plays his father in this, which I am a huge fan of anything he does. Dude, and he kind of steals the show. He usually does. Um, 
you know, I've I've been watching uh, Invincible on Amazon. He's placed, you know, he's the voice of Omni Man, um, which I was haven't a watched. Great, by the way, I've heard it's awesome, uh, but I haven't watched it. You, you being a comic book fan, it, it it's got this you know or, or anime feel to it the 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 animation but it's definitely uh, you know very mature it, it's a, a very mature product um but it has this kind of it has this kitty look to it this kind of you know feel but you know after the first you, once you once you see the first episode i always tell people watch till the end of episode one and you'll see how dark it gets and how it's really really switches and how um, you are yeah, you're, uh, you're cool with the animation after that yeah yeah exactly and but not to talk about that but yeah jk simmons man anything he's in i saw him in the trailer you know he's got the beard and and he's obviously playing pratt's father which i'm like okay there's going to be some good storyline to that if jk and simmons is. is involved he's not going to take a character that's that's bland or doesn't have some some type of good acting in there uh he usually picks really strong roles so i'm excited for it i'll check it out like i said it's free to see at the house um Amazon has all the money in the world, so I don't see why they can't put out really high-end production value movies that are really, really well made. Obviously, they're getting anyone from Hollywood. I, I, I was worried when this whole streaming thing kind of got into the, the Hollywood thing. I'm like, are they going to get good actors? Are they going to put enough money into this stuff? And they are. They're, t they're, they're throwing the bank at these things. They're getting great talent. Everything's there just what's the end product going to be you know so yeah no this is this is a good test of that you know i'm with you i'm with you they they definitely like i said there's there's a couple things in this i feel like that i don't know it feels like that it is it's still in the pilot run of amazon's film career yeah. you know what i'm saying it's like it yeah. which i'm not saying it's bad it's just like you can tell there wasn't a spielberg attached to it you know what i'm saying yeah, uh, well, but or good writing to me. Yeah, good writing is important as well. You can have this idea, throw a bunch of money at CGI and acting as well. But if you're if the writing's off or the directing, the pacing, any of that kind of thing, me and people like you, me and you, will pick up on that. And and and, you know, and you know, and that's that's it. All those things you just said, there is just some sort of like not that I could do it any better. But I'm talking, we're talking yeah. about all the money that was thrown at it. it. There are some moments here and there. It's just like, all right, there. What they're going for, they they kind of overshot the wad here, and it's not being effective. Or it's you know like when the little yeah. kid tells that one joke around the adults, and the adults think it's funny, and the kid's like, "Oh, they thought that was funny," and then he tells it twenty more times. It's like, all right, you overshot it there. But yeah. but overall, I was satisfied with it, and oh. compared to comparing it to like the ridiculousness of F nine. To this, this is definitely mm -hmm. more of a movie that you can sink your teeth in and actually get into. Oh yeah, you know it's actually you'll well, you'll feel it. And... I've heard some com uh, comparisons to Army of the Dead, which I gave such a bad review for. Um, which you know, not 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 necessarily how good or bad it was, but just it's a high budget, you know, Netflix versus Amazon type movie. It's got the big stars in it. You know, it's got all this. It's got. It didn't maybe have the biggest director like Snyder attached to it, but um, I, I just the Army of the Dead movie really fell flat for me, bad, me real bad. I was like, I mean, a two out of ten bad, which I don't usually give movies that that hard of a score. So, well, I you hope, know what I happened? Hope I can with... give this one. A... Go ahead. Oh, I was just gonna say you. This one I liked way better than Army of the Dead. Army of the Dead, I was very disappointed in. I feel like Zack Snyder is kind of losing his mind a little, maybe. Um, mm -hmm. but you know that, that they had shot that whole film with Chris D'Elia and then they had to reshoot yep. stuff with another girl. And so there are some yeah. scenes that it's completely CG'd in Yep, this girl. I, did, uh, I, I didn't know that until after I watched it. And when, and then I, you know, I look back and I'm like, okay, they did have to do a lot of reshoots, which was cool. I mean, thank God it wasn't a, a major character, you know, it was kind of more of a side character, but she right. killed it. She came in and did awesome in the role. I thought. And that's the thing. But, I like uh, Batista as well. I like all that. But to me, it was it, it was too it was too stylish. Honestly, it was too yeah. MTV. Uh, and, you know, when you have Dawn of the Dead remake that he did, which I thought was awesome. Yes. It's like then you're that's what I was wanting with Army of Dead. And I don't know. I, I feel like it's like he wasn't taking it seriously. Does yeah. that make any sense? It, that's it, what it feels like. It's like, oh, oh Zach, you did this movie, but you're just kind of not in it. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a perfect way of putting it. I, that's I said almost the exact same thing. I was like, I think he just totally half-assed this one. He just was like, I'm just gonna 
totally do what I want to do. And I don't care what the end product looks like. I'm just going to have fun with this. And obviously he was going through a lot of personal things at the time. I think there's a lot of symbolism in, in army of dead that sure. is and, over and, a lot and it of goes out, heads. My heart goes out to him and his family and, and him mm-hmm. losing his daughter. I, that not going to overshadow that, that, that sucks. And I love Snyder also. I'm not, I'm a, I'm yeah. a pro yeah. Snyder fan. Yeah. I watched uh, Watchmen last night. I, it, you know, it's on uh, HBO max and I was sitting there flipping through and I was like, ah, you know, I just, that intro, the intro scenes of Watchmen is one of my favorites. I mean, the comedian dying and then the montage, you know, that whole Bob, you know, Bob Dylan song, that whole first 30 minutes is, is really well done. I think Zack Snyder, some of the, his best work is in the openings of his films. They're very artistic. Yeah. Oh, you know? for sure. You get through yeah. like the whole that, first like, issue or so of Watchmen just in that opening scene. Mm-hmm. And... Yeah, but, you know, it, that's what I'm hoping for um, from Amazon is just to, to just if this is if this is much better than than army of dead i'll be happy with it and i'll definitely check it out because it's kind of a big summer movie it's just not to me it didn't really feel like a theater movie to me at first when i saw the trailer it, it it's worthy of it but i'm just like i'll catch it at the house you know yeah and i think you'll you'll see you'll see what i was talking about all the things you'll you'll be like this is good like give them give amazon yeah. a couple more years and they're going to start really banging them out um but I'll anyways you, i'll give you my review next week <laughs> nice well, moving on, and you had mentioned this one. Uh, we had talked about this in our text prior, but have you watched this yet? Fear Street? Man, I, I've, I've, I've definitely checked out the trailer when it hit. Um, and, I, and, and I was, I didn't know anything about the R.L. Stein books in the 90s and, and where this, this, is, this source material is coming from, uh, which is exciting. I was a huge R.L. Stein fan as a kid. I think this was just maybe a little bit more mature for me at the time. I just didn't hear of it or what it was, but what excites me about this is it's rated R. It looks, it when you watch R. the trailer, it looks, it looks very teeny slasher and, and it's set in the mid nineties, which is exciting. I hope they get some of that mid nineties nostalgic feel because me and you will know exactly if it's going to hit or not. You know, if the music's there, great. But if it, if it doesn't hit that mid nineties feel, you know, it'll lose me a little bit because that's kind of what excites me the most about it is, is you know, in the, in the trailer, the kids on a old computer, you know, like almost like an AOL chat room and stuff, things, things that our generation will, will, will love to see. But it, these kind of movies can go any way. And you know that. Yeah. Well, I watched the first one. So the first one's oh, okay. out. Uh, it came out over the weekend, I think. And uh, I'm going to watch the next one. That's for sure. Oh, it was cool. fun. It definitely... I think is self-aware. So, and I'm not going to give anything away, but it is, yeah. you feel like you're watching a R.L. Stein novel come to life, but the mature ones, it is R rated. Yeah. Um, there are kills and they're good kills, but it's definitely, it is nostalgic of the nineties. The music is hugely nostalgic. The whole thing you said about the AOL and all that hugely nostalgic. So, and there's a lot of jokes here and there that aren't intended to be jokes from them, but are funny to us because so much time has passed. So you're like, oh man, that yeah. is the way we used to do that shit or whatever, you know? So they right. nailed all that really well, man. I think um, it's it's a little better than I thought it was going to be. It's Did you see Freaky? I did, yeah. So imagine Freaky and scary stories to tell in the dark kind of had a baby okay so it has a stylus approach like freaky but it's a little bit yeah. more creepy like scary stories to tell in the dark and there are all these things okay. that are pulled from the novels and it is kind of this multiple trilogy event thing happening so there are a lot of elements coming together there's a there's a lot of figuring out the lore on their own you know like when kids and, and that's another thing it's a group yeah. of kids but they're teenagers and uh, it, it does a lot of that just stereotypical stereotypical stuff that you know that any slasher does but because of that it makes it good and what I didn't like about Freaky is Freaky did the slasher thing at the beginning and I was really liking the tone and then it just sort of turned predominant comedy and even though there were cool yeah. kills in that and funny kills it just got way too silly this one tries to keep it that horror going but it, again the whole time you're watching it the colors and everything it's like remember what the cover of those R.L. Stein novels looked like? They really yeah. achieved that well in this movie. So I thought it was really good. I don't know if it's all that scary. I wasn't like, 
shit you know like some rob zombie stuff you yeah. watch you're like what did i just see whereas this is like that was cool that was awesome it's like yeah like watching scream you know what i mean yeah so and, it yeah, and that's that. what got to be excited in, in the trailer was that zombie song to start it out you know like you know more human than human kind of stuff and i'm like oh, okay you know and, and if they kind of get that that same vibe and feel that the trailer has, which I, I'm going to watch it, 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 it definitely. Um, and what what at which it, it's a three parter. So does it jump decades? Is it like so it'll yeah, be it mid started '94, but now we're about to go back to 1978. But they're mentioned. Okay. But there's characters that are duly involved, and you start. They uh, give you this cool little trailer at the end of this one that for the next one, but it's yeah. not the trailer you've seen. Like it's. Okay. The only way you can see this trailer is by watching it at the end of this movie, but it's like it's still a part of the movie. It's like when they're talking and they're talking about, oh, this, but this happened and so and so, so and so. And then you're getting glimpses of the next movie while they're talking about it. You know what I'm Very saying? Cool. Very cool. Yeah, um, I like that. That's, that's exciting. No, and it's cool. I mean, and the next one is Total Camp Slasher because it takes place oh, in 19, 1978 at a summer camp. So it's like you did the scream thing. Now we're doing the Friday the 13th thing. And and there's Very an intertwining cool. little overarching deal. To me, it kind of feels like the way American Horror Story seasons sometimes have this weird okay. overlapping deal, but they're doing it with three movies and it's a little tighter of an interwoven story. You know what I mean? Sometimes. Yeah, that's. Uh, I was going to put that that relation into the American Horror Story. The 84 one was was weird, but good, you know. I, I either love or hate AHSs. Like I, there's some seasons I think are just the best thing ever. And then there's some that I'm like, I can't even watch this, which sucks because, you know, the acting is always on par. The sure. writing is great. It's just all about the premise of the show. There's some that I really get into and there's some that I'm like, nah, I'll pass on witches and stuff, you know, the coven and all that kind of stuff. So coven I liked more the second time, but I think I like coven a lot because of me being born and raised in Louisiana. So there's this whole sort of like yeah. hometown feel but right it is one of my like i think asylum i really like uh i yeah. love roanoke i think roanoke was great mm -hmm. I, I thought uh colt was really jacked up but good yeah um i, I mostly like them theory. all i some of them i think are kind of eh, but i mostly really enjoy them for the most part i was disappointed with the ending of 84 um Apocalypse yeah. is probably my least favorite to rewatch. Apocalypse is just too like I feel like they're reaching with that one. Yeah. Well, what what I've noticed too with with this one being called 90, you know, 1994 was of the last 5 to 10 years there was a lot of 80s nostalgic stuff, you know, Stranger Things and all this stuff. Now it's getting pushed now to, to like the mid 90s, which is really more my childhood, you know. Mm -hmm. I was born in 83, so I started school in 90 and, you know, I'm, so it's just every year I was in that grade. So if it was 96, I was in sixth grade. If it was 97, I was in. So it, it, sure. we're, all, we're getting towards that mid 90s where it's more of like, oh man, this is what I kind of grew up with. And that's what I'm excited about some of these movies if they get it right. You know, the the, the birth of the internet, the just, we went through so much change in the 90s and we so did, much man. cool technology stuff, video games, movies, CGI and movies, just so much was happening. And I'm looking forward to, to more movies being based in that mid 90s kind of, kind of. Area. I think it's on its way, man. I think it's on its way completely. And yeah. I'm not sure what time period that the new American Horror Story is going to be in. You never know with them, but it is. They have announced, and I've talked about this on my last one, but you may know this, but they have announced that it's going to be two story arcs in one season. So oh, cool. you're going to have like a one through five, one through six story arc, and then a five through 10 or seven through 12 story arc. Um, I mean, the writing's always been on point with AHS. Like that's that's the one thing I think that they get right every time. It, it, no matter what little world they're in, the writing is is top notch. So. Yeah, it's it's provoking and it gets you. And uh, and I do think that the stories are going to intertwine and somehow and maybe or take place in the same city or something like that. But I know it's on like a northeastern coastal type area like Maine or something. So there's supposed to be like mermaids and shit. Macaulay Culkin's in it. Oh. oh. Yeah, uh, that talk about '90s. <laughs> yeah, man, that's I mean, great. That's what's that's why I brought it up. It's like I'm not sure what time period they're going for, but you got him in there, and then uh, there are some regulars coming back. I'm not sure if Kathy Bates is coming back or not, but man, she's. I mean, I I posted on the the thing that somebody that I think maybe you had posted that post. It was me, yeah, her 69th yeah, uh, birthday. Yeah, man, and uh, yeah, she's she's one of those ones. It's like 
you've just I've never seen Kathy Bates in a role I've always seen whatever role she's playing like I've never seen her like Brad Pitt there's plenty of roles I've seen uh old Brad but with Kathy yep. Bates I just lose her I just get into yep. the role immediately she's awesome yeah she, she is that person she's so well at, at taking over a character and making it her own um and yeah that was a cool little post I got a lot of I got a lot of a lot of comments on that one which I like to you know, Dan Aykroyd's was was I think the next day or something like that. But um, yeah, that's a, that. Like I said, if you don't know, I'm in a Facebook page called The Real Shit R E E L uh, on Facebook, and we post all the time. We just got done with our Buddy Cop bracket. Yeah, man. And, and and the matchup, the final guys. So Buddy Cop movies, obviously the pinnacle to me. The 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 reason why they exist is Lethal Weapon. So Lethal Weapon was matched up against which I which I loved was Hot Fuzz. It was, you know, the newer generation. It was the the one that parodies all the, the buddy cop movies, but does it so well. Um, I love those two guys, Nick Frost and, and Simon Pegg are just like. And Edgar so, Wright. Was there, I was going to say Edgar Wright, all those three guys, but those two, the, just the, those guys' relationship is just so realistic and organic. And they're, they are really good friends. So I just, I can't imagine how much fun they have on those sets. And and just you see that in the film, but to to, to match up against a le a legend that is Lethal Weapon and Murtaugh and Riggs, it couldn't hold up. So the champion uh. was Lethal Weapon. Everyone kind of called it, but man, the the controversy within the group and the bracket was fun to see. You know the the battle. You know that's not a buddy cop. Is seven is seven, but Brad Pitt's seven and Morgan Freeman's seven a buddy cop movie? That's the ultimate question. You know, yeah, and I think we talked about this when I was on y'all's podcast for a second. Yeah. That I, I'm not. I think it just barely makes it. But when I, I think Buddy Cop movie, it's like, I'm with you. I think, and I think I said this, so y'all asked me, what's your favorite? And I was like, man, it's like, don't you kind of have to say Lethal Weapon? Like, I mean, it just, yeah. there may have been some movies that had Buddy Cops in there, but to create that dynamic of the characters that people started making more movies based around two characters like this, you know, mm -hmm. it was Murtaugh and Riggs, yeah. you know? And yeah, so I'm, I, I think it is, you know, Hot Fuzz is awesome movie. But right. I mean, it's Lethal Weapon. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's 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 been. I think it, I'm pretty pretty uh, uh, confident to say it's con you know it's in concrete that it's going to be a champion of of a bracket, which is also a fun thing we do. We take the the, the champion bracket, the the bra uh, champion of the bracket, and we put it in in, in in its little spot. And then after we do enough brackets, we do a bracket of champions which is fun. So, you know, you'll get all these different genres of movies and then they're pitted against each other. So it just, it's just, it, it's a never ending game. I'm ready, so dude. Much fun. I'm ready for the bracket <laughs> of champions. I can't wait. It's going to be yeah, dope. It's a good time. I have just as much fun with the bracket, man. So I, I'm glad that y'all, y'all, I'm glad y'all have as much fun with it, but it, I definitely have a blast because right. I do my Facebook stuff, like not all of it, but a lot of it right when I wake up, I'll be getting yeah. awake and I'll just grab my phone still in bed and I'll mm -hmm. be doing stuff. And so to see those brackets, it, it gets my mind in the right, format oh yeah day. Char charlie does all the work on those he's he he that's what i love about him he's he's very uh point uh, you know he he's on time with everything he puts them out in the early morning um you know gets it gets it out there early in the day so people can battle back and forth all day long and and, and argue and vote and and have a good time i love the interaction you know of it it's fun no it's great dude and and that's I, i'm if y'all didn't have that page i wouldn't have posted and then we yeah. wouldn't have been able to meet and so that's yeah. Yeah. I love the, I just hope it all just keeps going, man. I hope that, you know, one day people are waiting for this show and waiting for the bracket. <laughs> Heck yeah, man. Heck yeah. Well, moving on a little bit. Do you remember when JFK came out, the movie? Were you too young to like, or were you into it? Or yeah. you... I know. I remember my dad and my family were huge Kevin Costner fans. So I remember it was a rental. It was a blockbuster rental for sure at the house. But yeah, way, way too early in my life to get into that, that, that film, which I've seen since as an adult and it is so well done. I mean, it's it an amazing an awesome movie. movie, regardless of what you think, what you believe. Exactly. Uh, still a great yeah, movie. There's That's a lot of controversy in it. It's about the conspiracy. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, and there's a lot of controversy in that. And, you know, being people that grew up in Fort Worth and Dallas, we have that extra tie to JFK that a lot of people don't have. I, I've worked down in, in downtown Fort Worth for 10 years, and it was so cool to know that JFK spent the morning or the night before in Fort Worth. Sure. He stayed at the, uh, he stayed at the Hilton Hotel. 
Um, he had a br breakfast at the Fort Worth, you know, I think it was town hall, something like that. And then he took the drive to Dallas. And that was kind of that, that was the history of that day. So I've always had a close connection to the history of uh, the, the, the sixth street or sixth floor uh, museum is the sixth floor museum. Yeah. I think it's the so, sixth floor. <laughs> that sounds right. Yeah. But we're talking about, we're talking about Dallas. how much we love. We have this and it's like, what is it? <laughs> Sixth, seventh, eighth. No, it, I think it's sixth floor in Dallas. I remember going as a kid and and to see his bloody shirt present, you know, on display, it just like really hits you that yeah, that this guy was murdered in front of everyone. You know, such an impactful thing in, in history and in, in the United States. And and that movie touches on all the conspiracy of it and all that. So it's a lot of a lot of a lot of emotion in that. Well, <clears throat> old uh, good old Oliver Stone. As, I don't know if you know about this, but he's got a whole new documentary that he's putting out, and it's not this chasing the light deal. Um, but I just showed this because it's kind of cool to see him young and old, you know, yeah, like yeah. old young Ollie. But yeah, he's got a documentary coming out that apparently has. So, do you remember back in the day they were just like in the year 2020, we're going to release all the files of mm -hmm. JFK, we're going to release it all. Yeah. yeah, I don't know what has and hasn't been released, but apparently not within the past couple of years oliver stone has gotten some info and gotten all kinds of never seen for interviews testimonies just Ooh. all kinds of documentations of things that that happened and occurred and so this documentary is having a hard time coming out in the states and it just came out over just got legit to be released in some places overseas and it will be it will come out here obviously but it's just having its i think it's having its hard time finding a either a, a streaming platform or someone to buy it and actually put it out there. If it's made, just doesn't have any sort of marketing or whatever to it yet. But I'm just curious to see it, man. I'm, I'm curious to see what he has to say, because I think that JFK, the movie, I don't, I really don't feel like Oliver Stone was trying to tell you to believe something. I think he was saying there is way more to this story than we know. And, but here's some options and here's what all these theories that people really do have. Let's throw them all into one film and really confuse you. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, what better hands to give that kind of information to than, than such a great filmmaker as Oliver Stone, who's already done the JFK movie. He's already, you know, he's, he's involved in it. He's got some passion in it. So yeah, that's, that's cool. And, and I'm a big conspiracy guy. Uh, I, I, I'm not the foil hat wearing guy that's going to tell you, you know, we never landed on the moon, but it's cool to talk about. It's cool to talk about why people do believe it or why people think these things go on. And I've seen the the polls over the years. Pretty much 75% of people think that something went on with JFK. This was not, this was not, you know, just it wasn't assassination. simple like they're trying to make you think it was. Exactly. There's a whole lot going on with that story that no one's ever gonna know. You know, it's if if the government doesn't want you to know something, you're not gonna know. So um, but it's cool. It's cool to talk about. It, it creates great stories and great conversations. And like I said, it hits really close to home because I don't care who you are. If you've driven down that street that he got, you know, that, that he went down that, that, that day in November, it, it gives you a, a weird feeling. It just, it's, it's really creepy and very and much intriguing. so, especially since you've, you've seen it in so many documentaries, exactly. black and white footage or old, just real footage and stuff like that, yeah. that, to actually go see it with your own eyes there is a, a creepy element that you know a, a chill you might get or a shiver yeah. quickly it's like whoa and again because it is so much controversy that's been oh, talked about and surrounded it for so many years makes it even creepier yeah yeah and it, like i said and intriguing and and man that, oliver stone did it pretty well in that movie i think like you said he pr presented all the the, the conspiracies and put it out there and, 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 you know, he's, he's just a great filmmaker. So can't go wrong with him. No, definitely can't, man. And I, there's some movies that I like better than others of his, you know, obviously yeah. platoon, things like that are amazing. You know, he wrote Scarface, things like that. And so there's plenty that I do love by Oliver. Um, but that, that this through the looking glass will be the first time I've ever seen a more of, I feel like he's projecting maybe his thoughts or what he, or maybe he's just trying yeah. to get more info out there. But it's called Through the Looking Glass. Right. So I just wanted to bring yeah. that up. Um, That's cool. One more thing, uh, two more things I was going to talk about, and then I was going to just kind of call it call it a day maybe. But um, yeah. are you, I know you're a Star Wars fan. You got to be, or to some extent. Um, there you yeah, Nice. 
Sweet. The Vader face, Scarface, but Vader face. You no, know, I, I got my lightsabers tucked away in the closet. I won't bring that out. <laughs> All right. Well, well, good. Now, okay. So now we can both geek out then. Um, yeah. So have you watched Bad Batch? I have. Yeah. What do you think? Um, I, I like the idea, like the premise, but I don't know. I, it didn't hit with me like I thought it was going to hit. What about, is that how you felt? What do you feel about it? You know, well, what I was going to say is, is that with Star Wars, I'm very picky. I'm very, uh, yeah. I'm very, I don't want to say judgy. I'm very snobby. So yeah. for me, it's like, I want it because it's future. Mm -hmm. I want the future feel so i want it to look as clean and feel future yeah. and when you get into the animated stuff it just doesn't work for me as well um yeah. there are certain ones like the original clone wars that came back on back in the day on the cartoon network it was like mm -hmm. five minute little shorts at the end of adult swim i've got those yeah. on dvd the whole thing those are cool because the animation is so original and so just like it's like in a different world but this yeah. the animation for something like that it's just hard for me, man. I don't know. And, and I, I liked Mandalorian. I liked Mandalorian season two a lot. Um, I didn't care for rise of Skywalker, but it's kind of, I need, I need more than a cartoon. And so I tried to start watching it. It's just like, I'm not saying here, I'm not going to sit here and tell you that it's bad and then it's not well done. It's yeah. just not for me. Yeah. That's kind of what I, I felt too. It just didn't hit. It, um, I, I'm kind of with you too on animation. Uh, especially that style of animation i think it's just because i grew up in more of the old school style the new the new stuff i the clone wars i tried to get into and i think it just hit at a, at a different time for me i was in my early 20s and i was like ah, i don't want it that's kitty stuff you know like I'll, I'll pass on that being such a huge star wars fan i don't have to watch all the things to, to be satisfied but mandalorian was was right up my alley and i was kind of with you too with with rise of skywalker i did that whole trilogy was they they and I hate to say this out loud, but they fucked it all up with the different directors and all the things. And Disney tried to do their best, but oh no, they ruined it. Has so That's many. a failed trilogy. Exactly. To me, yes. I mean, you no know, Snoke not not having any really storyline, and then Ray's parents never really evolved. And there were so many things that I was like, you, "What happened? Why did all this get so messed up?" You know, and it proves how big these movies are, and how many moving parts are, and how how much fan service needs to be involved. But Especially for something like didn't. this now, when it's that there, there are things you can't do in Star Wars. It's not like a playing yeah. field where let's test it. It's like no, it's gotten to a point to where no, there are rules you have to play by. Mm -hmm. Dude, that's and part I think of what Star what, Wars what, is. I think what that's what Favreau did the best with with Mandalorian was bring like slow everything down, guys. Like let's bring this back to storytelling. Of course, it's going to be in a great setting of Star Wars. You know, uh, that, 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 that setting in that environment, that world is always appealing to me. But it's not always about that. It's always about the spaceships and the boom booms. And I'll bring the storyline down to, to boil it down a little bit and have some more depth. I mean, I'm not ashamed to say that I cried when at the end of Mandalorian, man, when, when Luke, I mean, I'm not spoiling anything. It's been out of course, seven yeah, months, yeah, guys. But that's your fault. When Luke shows up, I got, I stood up out of my chair. I mean, I, when 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 Baby Yoda, you know, waves to Mandalorian, I I cried because it was just like I had everyone had such a shitty 2020. This was like I watched this like December 30th. Like it was like just the end of a shitty year, and I was so happy to see something that was so well done. And, and one of my favorite things of all time. It, and, like, and and pleasing to like the fans. I wanted that out of the trilogy. I wanted to get that moment out of the movies, but I didn't. I got it out of a Mandalorian show, which I'm still happy about. But, but, but it, it would have been nice to see it in, in the theater in that epic exactly. format. And it, it, yeah, to, to end nine should have gave him, they should have given me that much emotion and that much, you know, wow moment, which, which I, 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 that Mandalorian gave me. And, and like I said, it would probably a 10th of the budget and maybe that's what they need to do is less moving parts and less things involved makes a better story to me. So, and, you know, you know, big set pieces these days aren't, it's easier to make things look good. I think mm -hmm. that the problem with the last trilogy is part of the way they were, some of the actors, they were having to get involved. I mean, let's face it, Oscar Isaac, I mean, he's a big name, man. It's like, 
even in Force Awakens, that was a big, you were getting a big dude to get in this film and you had Harrison, that wasn't cheap. And so there was a John Williams, you know, all that stuff. Lucas, you know, he still was a part of it. Um, I like, I liked Last Jedi better than most people did. I think it's way better than Rise of Skywalker. Rise of Skywalker is just bad. Uh, the, the, from yeah. the get-go, the fact that the Emperor is just even alive is bad. But yep. um, I definitely thought Luke, the way Luke at the end of Mandalorian was awesome, and the way that they made you, they had this underlying thing, this depth about it, and it wasn't just about Star Wars stuff. It was about a man being changed by a child. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. and that that yeah. simplicity the of the story yeah. would take Star Wars away from it. This guy who was hardened, this child changed him. And that's beautiful, man. Yep. That's an awesome story that you can build on. And I think that's what there's none of that in Rise of Skywalker. There's none of none. that heart. You know what I mean? Yeah. And somebody said this the and other they day. They had moments to do it. Somebody they told me this the other day I mean, that they... if they would have done this, then I'm sorry to keep interrupting you. They said this the other day, yeah, okay. if you if you would have just said at the end when she says, and I am all the Jedi, if you would have had Obi-Wan, Luke, all these people behind her as Force Ghosts, Qui-Gon, all that, like backing yeah. her up, sending their power through her, then it would have been way cool. Yeah. But instead, I felt like it was a ripoff exactly. of Avengers Endgame. I am Iron Man. She's mm -hmm. like, I am all the Jedi. It's like, it, I didn't feel it. Yeah. You know, like I said, the storyline, you know, like I said, Snoke was was such a cool villain there. I was like, OK, he, we're going to th th we're going to figure something out with this guy. Nope, he's dead. You Chop know, the parent half. thing with her, I thought, you know, this mystery of her parents, who were they? And then all oh, they were no one. They were just a couple of farmers. I'm like, no, what? Like that was all the only emotion that I had involved in this. This trilogy was to find out who her parents were and her origin story. And. They're just like, no, we're just going to get lazy and put the emperor in. And it was so, so badly done. But, phoned in. It was phoned in. Yeah. Yeah. Which That brings me to my next thing. It's This is Star Wars. And this is actually the main reason I brought up uh, the Bad Batch is, do you know anything? Uh, let me find it here. I got it there. Sure. Do you know anything about this coming out? Have you seen anything about it? Star Wars no. Visions? I've heard I've, this is the more uh, kind of a Japanimation kind of thing, right? Fully, fully. Uh, yeah, they're yes. the, the anime or anime. I think that's, I get reprimanded yeah, by yeah. my cousin all the time. It's anime. I know. <laughs> um, anime. I got to say, this looks pretty cool because it's, it's people taking people in, in like overseas, Japan, taking mm -hmm. their love for Star Wars and sort of adding more of that, let's take, you know, lightsabers cool. Let's make the the lightsaber more samurai ish, and so it's. I yep. think in a way, it's kind of like the, what the Animatrix was for the Matrix. Um, yeah. So yeah, I'm, and I'm, I'm actually excited fan, about that. Yeah, I've seen some fan made stuff of like that anime uh, anime style, but with lightsabers and all that. But it's more it's fan made stuff, but it's low budget, but it's really really well done. And I mean, I don't know how these two haven't merged before this. Um, they're perfect for each other, really. Star Wars and, and more of a Japanese more, anime style. Yeah. Uh, their storytelling is phenomenal. Um, some of the best, you know. I don't. We did a, a an anime episode on on my my podcast, um, and I I've wa I watched a few to get into it. And and man, I mean, you can't say enough about the animation style and and the writing. Uh, it's it's really really well done. So. That's exciting. I mean, I'm always into uh, to new stuff and I've always, and you know, I, one of my favorites Afro Samurai, because it was like the most uh, put out there thing in the last 20 years that I touched because most Japanimation or anime, I'm, they hate when you say Japanimation too, by the way. That's oh like, yes. So, they really hate so that. So bad. I, you take that away. I'm sorry. But um, yeah, the style of, of Afro Samurai I loved and the soundtrack and, and Samuel L. Jackson and the whole look of it. So that's one of my favorites, but it's so mainstream. You know, most of this stuff is is these guys get off on it being you as know, underground as possible. Hard to find. Yeah, yes, the underground. You're right. So, I'm definitely a casual fan of it, but I will definitely check that out. Well, yeah, I'm definitely, I'm definitely, uh, I'm more excited to watch that first episode than I was Bad Batch. So, hopefully, it's something yeah. that you know can be cool, and we'll see with that and with the What If series from Marvel coming out on Disney Plus as well. That. I'm excited about that should be cool. I think that animation looks kind of cool. It reminds me though, what and I and I have it on DVD because I was like, I have to watch this. And it was the Batman 
where he is he's in the Japanese armor. It's all it's all um it's almost like Transformer thing. I, I I tried to watch all of it, but I couldn't. Do you know which one I'm talking about? Well, there's a bunch of it's an animated DC film. Here, hold on. Because <laughs> I have a bunch of them. I think I have I know we're live here, so I'm not going to try to take too long. There it is. Batman Ninja. All right. So I got I got something here that well, let's see if we can figure out what this is. So it's called Batman, Batman Ninja. Ninja. Yeah. Yes. I was yeah, um, I was about to show you. I've got it on this, but this is where this is like 18 of the animated uh -huh. films. And it's like, and, you know, I, I had to check it out, but it lost me. It just, you know, it was just, I think it was over my head. I don't know. It was a little, it was a little goofy. That's very the, much the animation is amazing. I mean, the style of it is, is great, but it just, I don't know. I couldn't get into it. See that, that, that is what they call like the else worlds. Cause like in Marvel, you have the what if, and then in the DC, you have the else worlds. Mm -hmm. So like, for example, the Dark Knight Returns by Frank Miller, the famous Dark Knight Returns, which, yeah. you know, the, the Superman Batman fight in Batman versus Superman is literally pulled from those pages. Yeah. Um, yeah. That was Elseworld. That was just a what if type situation. But the cool thing right. about the, the DC Elseworlds was like, what if it was, what if Batman was this way? Or what if Superman was this way? What if changes like one thing? So what if is like, what if Mary Jane got bit by the spider instead of Peter? You know what I mean? Yeah. Like that's yeah. what the what if stories are like. So that to me, that's, that's cool, cool because it's like altering one little thing in a timeline and seeing what changes 20 years later. So we're going to have like a, what if Black Panther was Captain America type deal, I think. And then there, yeah. or no, excuse me. What if uh, Black Panther was Star Lord? Like what if the alien chose Black Panther? Oh, like whoa. the ship instead of oh, Peter yeah. Quill. Like what if it would have yeah. chose T'Challa instead of him? So yeah. it's just all kinds yeah. of cool things like that. Um, so I'm really excited about that animation. And I like a lot of the DC animated stuff as well. I mean, I really yeah. love, like I said, there's like 18 films on here and I have more of them and the animated series. But some are hit and miss with those. I think some of them are awesome. The, the Long Halloween is out now. I don't know if you know about well, that. I was, I was going to mention that. Um, that <clears> just came out. I'm definitely going to check that out. Um, I heard the storyline and the, the writing is amazing. Um, well, I mean, that's my favorite uh, Batman graphic novel is long yeah. halloween so I, you know yeah I, I the killing joke was always was one of my favorite comic you know graphic comics at the time and that was really well done as well um yeah man i'm looking forward to that for sure i love i love uh, that batman the animated series was so well we were gifted that as children i mean it's, god it was it's it's so well done and at the time i i couldn't appreciate it i just was like this is an awesome cartoon but now i i still watch it as an adult and it's just so amazing oh dude to me that is still the animated series is still better than any dc animated film they've done yet like i still think the animated series is the best hands down and like i said it, it's 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 crazy how at the time i just didn't know what i was watching i was just enjoying it every moment of it but then i look back at it and i'm like damn that was like just that, that show was for us kids, man. Like, there's probably some adult kid, guys at the time that were into it, but man, we were getting a gem with that one. Well, you know, and, and Harley Quinn didn't exist until that show. She wasn't a comic yeah, book character. Yeah. That show created exactly. her, and now she's in yes. the comics. Now she's huge. She's in two Suicide Squads and, and yeah, her own she's movie. Getting, I, exactly, um, which is awesome. Yeah, totally, totally pulled off that, that character perfectly, I think, in, in the animated series. Well, hey, man, um, let's end it on that. Let's end it on some Batman. We both yeah. love the bat. So yeah, for sure. Oh, yeah. yeah. That, and which, by oh, the yeah, way, I, you, you said how much you love Batman the last time. And Batman is equally my favorite character of all time. Always has been. I got Batman yeah. tattoo and shit. So, um, but yeah, man, thanks for joining me again, dude. This was awesome. I got to come up with a cool. Yeah, I'll, cool I'll, I'll, I'll go up to my you. top shelf. I'll go oh, up yes. to my top shelf, which is all my Batman stuff. If you can see all that, uh, I can totally see you it. Know, it's beautiful. I got, my, I got my Joker stuff up there. That's kind of my Batman thing. There's a little Beetlejuice back there too. If you can I see, see him, I see him on the couch. <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, Batman's my dude. Yeah, I've got I've got a little play arts, little play arts Ooh. Batman here. Ooh. Of yeah. like collections up there Heck but yeah you know one of these days we're just gonna have to share some of our our garb and memorabilia we'll just have an episode of sharing all of our stuff <laughs> yeah there's there's some i mean if i if i had the money man i would have god there's some of these these 
these these displays and these things I've seen these guys have online and I'm like, Oh, it would be so cool to have all the hot toys and all the, the expensive stuff all displayed out. But that it's just, it's just, it's gotten so big. I mean, I see some of those, the shows that they go to now and, and some of these statues and some of these things I, I yearn for like thousands of dollars now. And I'm oh. like, I'm out, <laughs> you, know? you know, look when, when spitting the real shit is starting to pull in some cash and so is brass yeah, world brothers, yeah. then we can start getting some of those. <laughs> well, then we, then we're going to see, some- that's how you know that we're starting to do well is when our toys start yeah, turning yeah. into hot toys behind us. <laughs> yeah, I have a whole collection room, just a whole room in my house. Is, yeah, yeah, just go and that's the Batman room, you know. <laughs> Hell yeah, that's the Batcave. Yeah, the Batcave. But yeah, dude, um, also always awesome talking to you, brother. Uh, I cannot wait for, for us to hit it up either this week or next week, whichever we're going to do. And um, yeah, this has been fun, dude. Hey, and, and tell people again where to find you guys on your, your oh, show, yeah. Spitting the Real Shit. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. So, so yeah, man, send me the link and uh, and we'll and I'll spread the word and uh, yeah, I've been looking forward to it. Yeah, man, no, no, but I, I was also saying let let everybody know where to find you, where to find y'all. Oh, like, oh, oh, me, yes. Um, I have two kind of things I'm doing. Um, like I said, I don't I don't really moderate too much on my Facebook page, or, or it's not mine. It's it's a buddies of mine, but it's the real shit. Um, Facebook page R E R E E L, and then our podcast is called Spitting the Real Shit um you can find that on any any podcast forum that's out there so i like to list it on spotify um but like i said it's on any any forum that 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 has podcasts so check it out all right well that's it guys and uh rylan thanks again dude it was a it was a blast i love hanging out with you and i can't wait till next time dude and uh, hey we're going to talk about black widow for sure on monday oh yeah I'm gonna catch. I'm gonna catch some new movies, and uh, we'll we'll, we'll definitely. I love. I love when we've both seen something. We can, you know, kind of give our little rating and kind of give our 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 ideas to the to the fans about what's out there and what's new and what's fresh. So, yeah, man, me as well. Popcorn. Popcorn. I can't wait for some love it. Popcorn. <laughs> well, thanks right, again, man. Have a great day, dude. You too, man. Enjoy your week. Peace out. All right, man. Peace. Peace.